Even today, people come from America and Europe, they come to see these ruins, they come because the Nawab is an important figure in the history of India. So Sanatana Goswami and Rupa Goswami, they were both working for the Nawab. They were his big ministers in the government. And they had become in the, the Nawab had given them Muslim names. One was Dabya Kas and the other was Sakar Malik. And they were, you know, they were in the dress like Muslim people also. So they were so rich because they were the, the chief ministers in the government. They were so rich that when Rupa Goswami went home, he had so much money they could fill a boat. And he divided it in a very nice manner. He gave half of his money for the service of the devotees. And he gave 25% for the third for his family. And he kept 25% for a marriage. So he was so rich. And he gave it all up to go and live in Vrindavan. And Rupa and Sanatan, they were both living there in Vrindavan. They live under a different tree every night. They were not so young. Because they were they'd be big ministers in the government, they couldn't have been very young. They were quite grown up and experienced in the world, but they had retired. They left everything. So Nathana Goswami was so valuable to the Nawab that when the Sanatana to retire, the Nawab had him put in jail, we had him arrested. So he said, Sanatan Goswami said, Nawab, who was the most important thing to do? When Sanatan Goswami was working, the Nawab was in charge of Sanatan Goswami, and he was able to do it. And at that time, Sanatan was able to use that 25%, which he kept for emergencies, he used it to bribe the jailer to get out of jail. So you may say, oh, he lied, he cheated, he tried something, that's not good, devotee shouldn't do that. No, but the both should, they can cheat, they can lie for the higher purpose. But there are many examples of the both who cheated people in order to devote themselves more fully to the service of Krishna. Just like Ramanujacharya, 
Ramanujacharya the very famous Vaishnava, the head of the Sri Vaishnava Sampradaya. He was a he was in married life. He cheated his wife. Just like Ramanujacharya, he was a Mahan Acharya. He was one of the greatest people. He was one of the greatest people. He was one of the greatest people. He told his wife. Oh, a message came from your father. You have to go home immediately. Your father needs you at home. And the wife went, Oh, oh, my father needs my And then immediately she left. She went to see her father. So at that time, Ramanuja went and took sannyas. And we see Lord Krishna lie also. Lord Krishna also cheated. He said he wasn't going to fight in the battle of Kurukshetra. But when Arjuna's life was in danger. Krishna fought. Krishna picked up the chariot wheel and he raced towards Bhishma and got grandfather Bhishma stopped fighting and surrendered to Krishna. So Prabhupada said, great souls may cheat, but they cheat for a great cause. So Sanatan cheat, he described the jailer, he got out of jail. And then he went to Vrindavan. And in Vrindavan, how did they live? They would do Madhukari. They would do Madhukari. Madhukari means you go to the different homes and you go beg a little food from each person. You won't take a big plate, you will only take a little from each And Rupa and Sanatan were wearing also loincloth, they were just dressed in some rags, they didn't take anything with them. So before they've been big ministers, they've been the governors, they've been the, the big ministers in the government. Now they give up everything and they were just going begging from people. So it appears like they're, oh, they're so poor, oh, they have to come to us to get food, oh, we have to give them charity to help them. But actually, they're the richest people. They are the richest people because Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, is their property. Prabhupada tells a story in the purport. He tells a story about how this one man came to Sanatana Goswami and he was asking, he said he, he, he had heard that Sanatana Goswami had a touchstone. A touchstone is what you can use, it can turn anything to gold. So 
So he asked Sanatan, have you really got that stone? Have you got one of those stones that can turn everything to go? Sanatan said, oh, that stone, yes, yeah, it's over there, it's in the garbage over there. And so the man went over to the garbage and he found the stone and he, he, he tested it and he saw it was changing things to go. So, so he was surprised and he was saying to Sanat, he said, you know, such a valuable thing, why you put it in the garbage? And so the Goswami said to him, he said, oh yeah, I don't need it, I have something better than that. So when he heard that Sanatana has got something better, then the man said, Oh, oh, you've got something better? Can, can you give the better thing to me? So Sanatan said to the man, and he said to him, he said, if you want the better thing, you have to throw that stone away. So go, throw that stone in the Yamuna. So the man was, such a valuable stone, I have to throw it in the Yamuna. If you want the most valuable thing, yeah, you have to get rid of it. So finally the man thought, yeah, I want to get the best, the most valuable thing. He took the stone and threw it in the river. Now come, sit down here. And he handed him a bag of pizza nuts. He said, Now you chant Hare Krishna. Okay, this is the most valuable thing. So this past in that story that's told just to help us to understand that the spiritual and the material don't go together. If we're serious about the spiritual things, we have to gradually reduce the material. And the more we have the material things, the more advancement of material living, then the more difficult it is to be serious. About right. Every day we say the ten offenses in chanting the holy name. So the tenth offense, the last offense, is not to have complete faith in chanting Hare Krishna and to maintain material attachment. So material attachment, it's not that you cannot have material things, but if we're attached to them and if we're bewildered by them, then it's a problem. Right? 
We want to taste the nectar in chanting the holy name. We want to experience the bliss of spiritual life. We have to give up the material things. Just like there's a story about the one family that were going to the wedding and the wedding was to be the next morning and they had to cross the river in the night to get to the other side for the wedding. Just they were happy for it, they are gonna jump in any for it. So they got in the boat and they told the boatman, you have to row all night, we have to be there in the morning for the auspicious time for the marriage. When we just had Akshaya Tritya, it's the auspicious time, many marriages. So they told the boatman, we have to be there early in the morning for the auspicious time to do the marriage ceremony. You have to row the whole night. Boatman said, yes, I'm ready, no problem, I will row all night. So the family all got in the boat and they lay down, went to sleep because it's dark and it's night time, they're tired, they want to have some rest, so they all went to sleep in the boat and the boat managed rowing the boat the whole night. And then gradually the morning came and the sun came up and everybody woke up and they looked around and they were shocked. Ah, oh, the boat is still in the same place. The boatman, you boatman, you've been sleeping, you have not been rowing. Boatman said, no, I've been rowing the whole night. Look, I'm sweating, I'm tired, I've been rowing the whole night. Why the boat's in the same place? You haven't moved. This is where we were like yesterday. This is where we got on the boat. We're still in the same place. So then they looked around, then they saw the rope was attached to the side. They had the anchor in the ground. The boat was stuck there to the ground, that one place couldn't move. So sometimes we do devotional service like this. We, we're doing the chanting, we're doing the service, but we're keeping all our attachments in material life. We're thinking, my body, my home, my family, my money, we're thinking all material things. I've got so much money today. In the future, I have more money. I must have money. I must have money. I and this way we'll have a house and the house will be bigger, I'll build a bigger house, we'll have two floors and three floors. 
Better not to give them money because you give them money they'll buy drugs and they'll drink alcohol and gamble and they'll waste it. So four bhanas and four ashrams, there's the brahmachari in the student life, and then the grihastha, the family life. And then after family life, then there's the Vanaprastha life, the retired life. And the Vedas say, Pancha Sorbam Vanam project. From the age of 50, you have to go and live in the forest. So, how to go in the forest, even here in Taiwan, even here for some money, not very easy to go in the forest. What you have to do, you have to go to the Iskon temple, to service in the Iskon temple. People retire from material life, take up spiritual life. You don't just keep working all your life just to make money. That's not a good plan. You have to give up the material life and that should come above the age of 50. You have to plan. Half the life is over. Age of 50, if you live 100, that's a full life. So half the life 50, you retire. Give up the material duty. Take up the spiritual life. Because we have a lot of attachment in the course of life. You're working, you have a family, you have children, you have money and profit. We get very attached. And that attachment will cause us to take birth again in the material world. Just like Bharat Maharaj, he was king of the world, and he went, but he went away from the world, he went to Himalayas, and still he got attached, he got attached to a deer, and had to become a deer. So we have to prepare ourselves for the end of life. And the way to prepare for living is by detachment, by cultivating detachment. You can read about the great kings, they all took Vanaprastha, they went to forest, like Sobari Mune, he had 50 wives, he went to the forest with all his wives and they all went back to God. And Vishabde, he was also king of the world. He also retired, went to the forest and did the tapasya. So this is what comes after Grihastha. 
Prihastha life is not the end. You have to go on to the next ashram, to the Vanaprat. Wife can stay, you don't have to get rid of the wife, the wife can stay. But you have to give up the business and all this working, everything, making money. So often the husband and wife they'll go to visit holy places. They'll go together, they'll go around all the holy places and this way they're preparing for the next one. So Lord Krishna, He becomes the property of those people who give up all their material attachment. Oh, Lord Krishna is Atmarama, He doesn't need anything material. We also have to become Atma Rama. Atma Rama means one who takes pleasure in the self, in the soul. Right? Material life, we take pleasure in the money, we take pleasure in the family. Take pleasure in sense gratification. But there's higher pleasure, the pleasure of the soul. That is what the Atma Ramas, the great souls, they want to experience that pleasure. Mm. The verse is there in the Srimad Bhagavatam, the Atma Rama Sloka. The Mayavadi is impersonal, they cannot understand it. Only the devotees can understand the Atma Rama Sloka. That even those who are Atma Rama, they take pleasure in hearing the glories of Krishna. Just like Shukadeva Goswami, Shukadeva Goswami stayed in the womb of his mother for 16 years. He didn't want to come out. He didn't want to come out because he was so worried that material energy is there and may get attracted. Safer, I just stayed in the womb. But then Lord Krishna came and told him, said, no, it's okay, if you come out, you won't be safe. You won't be afraid. So he came out, he left, came out of the womb, immediately he left home. And his father, the asset, was saying, no, no, wait, wait, I have to give you a nishi, I have to give you the jama, I have to give you the sacred thread. But Sukadev was I don't need any sacred The liberated souls, those who are liberated, take off the sacred so Sukadeva Goswami, he was a liberated soul from birth. He didn't want a sacred 
But when he had the pastimes of Krishna, when he had Krishna Kita, then he went, oh, what is this? Oh, tell me more. I want this. This is hearing, the power, this is the power of hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. This it awakens the highest spiritual pleasure. But that pleasure is only for the, is only there for those who are given up their attachment to the material. If we are still thinking the body and all the things in relation to the body, then we won't have the taste to hear the topics of Krishna. Our taste will be to chew what has already been chewed. Prabhat Maharaj describes in Srimad Bhagavatam. Puna, 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 Vita, Puna, 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 Chewing what is already being chewed. Just like, you know, you get the sugar cane and you put the sugar cane through that grinder to crush out the juice. And so then you're left with this, the cane has no more juice in it, right? So if you take that cane and chew it, there's no taste there. Sometimes, you know, when we were little school kids, we would chew chewing gum. And we chew the chewing gum, and after you chew the gum for some time, there's no taste, then put that up, we stick it under the table. <laughs> <laughs> So if somebody else comes along, they get the gum from under, they chew it. <laughs> There's no taste anymore. <laughs> the material life is like that. It is punas puna charvita charvananam. Chewing what is already being chewed. We're trying to enjoy, but there's no pleasure there. The pleasure is like the drop of water in the desert. You're in the desert and somebody can I will give you water, give one drop. One drop is not enough, I know I need more. No, only one drop. So this is material life is like that. There's some pleasure, but the pleasure is so small. Chapala Sukha, flickering pleasure. Chapala Sukha, 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 Chapala you know the meaning? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The famous 
Sam, Bhutan Dash, enemy. All of these material things, they have to work so hard and the pleasure is so short and temporary. Mother of Nunja, your son, Sama, Kam, Katu, but you go to Versailles, Tun, but it's some boats that are suits, come to the school, I got him already at the gun by go. Ritana, your well, Jovana, your youth, Parijana, all the things in relation to the family, they're all just so tempted. Lotanda, you go to Madama, Edhana, Yovana, Putra, Edhan, Yodhan. Yuan, Ramro, Yuan, Sariko, Yuan, Utra Parijan, Sapa, Inish, Horela, and Versa, Chanko, like Matteo, and Versa. Kamala, Dava, Java, Jiva, Dava, Mala, Chapala, Tukola, Mala. Just like a drop of water on the lotus, the lotus, it rolls off the leaf bank into the water. Amro, Jiva, Kasto, Java, Dava, Kamala, Dava, Dava, Jiva, Dava, Mala. Just a Kamala, Purmati, Pani. We want happiness. It's not wrong to want happiness. You have to know what is real happiness. So to get the real happiness, we give up the maya, we give up the illusion. And we go to the real thing. The Sai Su Pratalanare Hamile, you Maya Hodo, a Sali Vina Tila Chorera, a Sali Vana person. That real thing is there at the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. The Maya Hina, the Saski of Tavanagiri, Pawan Sri Krishna, who put a common Katana Kamanaja. And when you find the lotus, when you get that shelter at the lotus feet of Krishna, you never want anything else. You'll never come back. Vidura came back to Hastinapur to preach to Dhritarashtra. Five thousand years ago there was only one Dhritarashtra. Today there's a Dhritarashtra in every home. And we need Viduras to come and preach to them, to get them out of their Maya. So Maharaj Yudhisthira came and he was looking, where's my, where's my uncle, where's Dhritarashtra, where's Vidura, where are my uncles? They left. They left. Them. They didn't tell anybody. They just left that place. And Gandhari also went with them. And Maharaj Yudhisthira said, I have been cheated by these great souls. So they cheated Maharaj to go out into the forest, take shelter of the Supreme Lord. We have to also take shelter of the Lord. Then our life is successful. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Any question? Is it okay, Krishna Sava? Everybody going to take one of class? What's your age going to? How old is it? Good. Tata Maja Sava, Nibhala Prasthani Nunja, Kastu Ume Sote Nunja. Which one are you? You ask me to?
from the material. Yes, you retire from the material. Now you take up fully the you can stay at home, but you have, you have to be fully dedicated, chanting, studying scriptures, teaching. They should say, where did you go? They shouldn't say, when are you going? If they say, when are you going? So Prabhupada cheated also his family and got out of the family. He asked his wife, do you want tea or me? So the wife said, oh, I'd rather have tea than you. <laughs> so that was when also a nice example. Prabhupada Thakur had this one woman, Chintamani, and he was very attached to this woman, Chintamani. Bilba Mango had been a, like a songwriter, a poet, and like a, and this Chintamani was the one who would sing the songs which he wrote. But, you know, she was like more like a, a society girl thing. She wasn't a pure relationship, you know. So it happened one day, Bilba Mangal's father died and he did the funeral for his father and immediately thought, I have to go and see Chintamani, I have to be with that woman, I have to go to Chintamani. So But it was pouring rain and it there were no boats across the river. How to get across the river? Then he saw a dead body. He got a hold of the dead body and he used the dead body to sit on to cross the river. And he got to Chintamani's house and it was all locked up. There was a big fence around their house. The, the gate was closed. He couldn't get over the wall. He had to climb over the wall and he held on to the snake to pull himself up over the wall. And finally got to the door, is beating on the door, Chintamani, Chintamani, where are you? And so after she came, she opened the door and she saw Bilba Mangal and she looked at him with disgust. And she said, oh, you're so attached to me. If only you had the same eagerness to see Lord Krishna. And 
यो आशक्ति तो भगवान श्री कृष्ण सिंह भाग थी And Bhagwan Mango, the words just entered his heart, and he just thought Krishna, and he just somehow he understood that he was in total Maya, and he just had a total change in his life. The whole of the that the Chinta Mani Mani Bhandi, most of the next two aspects of Bhagwan are Sato Bhagwan Krishna Singh aspect of Bhagwan. Then there is the Jivan Sabhan and the Bhagwan Singh of the Kanda Hin Mutu Mangu Sijara. Only two days he Krishna Singh could not have done so. Jivan Buddha. So that woman Chintamani, she was she became almost like his guru because she was telling him, "You go to Krishna." The actually, his, it said that Bhagwan Mangal's guru from previous life somehow he had given instruction to this woman that she should guide Bhagwan Mangal. And you heard your Chintamani said, "Like Bhagwan Mangal, guru just came out." Said, "Kena mane tam mere smashi na mane sir Krishna se kena jana dona kiri." Anything you want, if I can serve you in any way, please tell me. I'll give you whatever I can to help you. तो ये बिना मंगल संन्यासी भरा वो बिना वजन से वो बिना वजने के बिना वजने के रास्ता में वो लोग ब्राह्मण को धर्म पूजे सं ब्राह्मण धर्म पूजा के ब्राह्मण ले भाजे तब लोग मन की सेवा करना पाम मने सोले सर सोले के लिए बिना मंगल ले भाजे सं मने जी मार्क्सर ते सेवा कर सोले दिन ले बना मंगल सु So Bhagwan Mango looked at the man's wife and he saw, oh, he's got a very beautiful wife. His wife is very attractive. So he said, "Did your wife come here?" But then he got a bit of a mango. The day he came, Brahman ki patni se pati bolli sunda hi sin. Aayi mare sangi. Then he was just a wife. Then he mara dincha mane. Then he patni mara hi mere chhoma mara dincha mane sole. So the Brahman told his wife, "Go, go to Bhagwan Mango. See what he wants." So Bhuva, she came to Bhuva Mangal. Bhuva Mangal said, "Just give me that pin from your hair." And she took the pin from her hair, and Bhuva Mangal took the pin and plucked out his eyes. The Telugu Brahmin said, "Bhane Jan, jaun to jaun ki nae, bola bhane Jan ki nae, ki nae ki ta bola bhane ki, pati nae chhau ma jaun tiye chhau." Then Bhuva Mangal said, "Bhuva Mangal chhau ma aro, ki pati nae ki Brahmin ki pati nae bhane Jan ki chhau ma thao ko ma bhago." बिजी हो 
job, Varshu, program, Varshu. And you get a, a better life. If you have a better life, you're not going to ba- go back to the worst life, are you? Why go back to the horrible life if you have a better life? If we have the taste, if we are enjoying Krishna consciousness, then why will we go back to material life? Mm, Prabhupada also appreciated that before he left, Prabhupada said, if I have done anything, I have given a better life for so many people. Yeah, Maharaj, his question is, uh, you say Sudha Goswami lived live in his mother home for 16 years. It is very difficult to live for one year. How he managed for 16 years? Oh, a very great soul. It was before Kali Yuga began also, right? Kali Yuga. But he was not an ordinary soul. He was the son of the other day. He was a very great soul. From very birth, Atma Rama. So, yeah, you can do this. Just like we can read about Titi. Titi was pregnant with two sons. Aranya Kashipu and Aranya Aksha. She kept 